Welcome to our countdown. <laughs> oh, hey, hi. everyone. It is Friday. That means it is time for another Paint and Slay, where myself, V Muse, and the lovely Lauren above me, we will be painting some miniatures of uh, monsters you can find in-game of Idol Champions. And we're going to have some fun this week with a couple of minis, which, you know, they can't fool you right now, but we're going to be painting the Wiz Kids. Mimics from the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line. So I am very much looking forward to getting some color on these two curious creatures. But before we get into that, Lauren, I know we have a lot happening this week, don't we? Always. Always, always and forever. Always, always, always. <laughs> First off, thank you to the wonderful Mars, who is in chat right now as both the moderator and the producer also, I, I have been informed he just received a very special set of dice, which makes me happy, uh, especially since I still have not received that set of dice. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so he's in chat as our moderator today. He's going to be helping out, especially if you have any questions for V and I about painting, about idle champions, about mimics, about dice, about idle champions presents Court of the Raven mm -hmm. Queen or about life life in you general know, we'll question. <laughs> life in general go ahead and put question in big capital letters uh before your question so that mars can grab it because i will not always be looking at the chat and sometimes i will be looking at the mini that i'm painting also speaking of idol champions presents court of the raven queen i believe the next vote is live right now yes 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 yeah. yes, yes. And, and it's uh, a Tatiana themed vote. It is that. So if you want to vote, you have two options. You can either uh, let uh, Tatiana add to her equipment with a wind vane, or, you know, maybe a belt of storm giant strength. I think that sounds appropriate. <laughs> I think, I think like yesterday's vote, either of these options is going to be epic. Mm -hmm. I am voting for the belt of giant strength because Tatiana already has 10 abs. I want to see her have 12. Yeah, I, I mean. I want to have like 15 abs. Mm -hmm. I, I, I definitely am of the belts brigade too, because quite frankly, I love it when Tatiana hulks out. Like for me, it's just, oh, yeah. it's the very best, especially with wild shape thrown into the factor. I'm like, oh yes, please, it's fun. Uh, so that's, well, you know where our votes are going then, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Orkira already saved, or Tatiana already saved Orkira with the power of abs. Mm -hmm. So why not give her more abs? Yeah, I um, mean. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. Yeah. Also, the uh, the last thing I'll say is the weekend buffs should be live now. If you don't see them in your game, take a second, close your game, restart it. Mm -hmm. Should be there. All right. Yay. Enough of announcements. Let's you get to the minis. We have the oh. minis. Now, I already saw that chat was commenting that these are smaller than expected. They are actually medium size. So here I have a medium humanoid as comparison. So they're medium. I will say... I'm with you, Chet. They were mm -hmm. smaller than what I expected, and we were talking about this. Yeah. I think it's simply because we picture mimics to be massive, and some of them can be. Yeah. But but these are just the regular size. It's a mimics. chest and a barrel. And I can say from personal experience, having painted typical chests and barrels from WizKids, these are the size of their barrels 
These are the sizes of some of their chests. So to me, it makes sense that, yeah, of course, if their mimics are going to reflect an item they already have, they're going to be in the same size range. But yes, they are medium in size. They aren't large like the past couple of miniatures we have done uh, or huge in some cases. <laughs> but we're going to have and some fun And they're not going to be these. completely covered in green. No, we're off, we're off the green train. <laughs> Green, green is back to an accent color. We did a lot of green. Yeah. It's okay. It, they were gorgeous. They were so gorgeous. much fun. Oh, it so was so gorgeous. much fun. I loved it so very much. And, yeah. you know, a little spoiler-esque thing. There will be a touch of green on one of these, but it's not something where we're going to be turning these into Kermit again. Uh, but we are, before jumping into actually putting paint on, we're going to be doing a wash with Nuln Oil, which is a black wash, basically. Uh, reason for doing this is these minis, first of all, with them being white, there's a bad case of flashback that happens all the time with miniatures. So in this case, the black wash will help mute that. But also these have so many little details that you may not realize until you put a preliminary black wash onto your miniature, which yes, you can start with a wash to help bring out details. The other thing it does is by putting that wash on there, it will help get into those recesses. So if for some reason your paintbrush hops over a spot, it turns it more into a shadow accent as opposed to, hey, there's a spot of white where I missed painting. Okay. Ah! Yeah. And with mm. the nooks and crannies going on, uh, yeah, you're going to want that insurance policy basically is what this turns into. Uh, and it I looks like, like we have, uh, oh, we have a fellow player of mine from Dawnbringers, Jeremy in the chat, and DJ has also hey. joined us. Hello, gents. So do you have a preference as to who you want to start washing up, the uh, barrel or the I'd chest? I'd say we start with the classic. The chest. And yeah, so we do the chest first cool. and then move. So we'll be kind of going back and forth and back and forth mm -hmm. um, to make things easier. But we might as well start with the classic. The classic. We'll go with the classic. So what I am using is from Citadel Shades line, the Nuln Oil. This is just your typical black wash. If you don't have this at home, all you need to do is take a black acrylic paint some clean water and mix the two together until it is very runny like skim milk or a uh, good broth and then you can turn that into mm. a black wash and yes i always use food references because more often than not people tend to eat we'll talk about that <laughs> you know you know if you're gonna call yourself out like that i totally just did you totally just did you totally just called yourself out like that food food is life food is love and that's why snacks are good. Mm -hmm. Also, that's why food <laughs> references for how you want to get your paints work so well, because most of us are familiar with broth because food does happen occasionally. Yes. Mm -hmm. A good pho broth. How's that? Ooh. Oh, now I want pho. Now I want pho. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Anyway. Anyway, uh, we're we're covering this whole thing in wash. Covering the whole thing in wash. So you want a nice big round brush. I'm going for my number five from the Mod Podge set that I very much love and adore using and have. Oh, that reminds me to do something. Um, it's a set that Plaid sent me a couple years ago and I have stayed faithful to using those. They are good to me because I am not good to brushes. Uh, <laughs> I love it. They're good to me, but I'm not good to them. <laughs> no. The price point is actually really nice though for when you need to replace brushes more often. Um, that's good because yeah, yeah, that, hey, yeah that is something like it's nice that when you start off in mini painting that the the biggest expense beyond the mini is the paint and the brushes mm -hmm. but then the paint and the brushes last for many 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 minis yes. and so when it becomes time that well it's that time you gotta you gotta get some new ones it's good mm -hmm. that it's not that bad exactly so you can see already by putting just this black wash on suddenly we have peepers to peep at this chest mimic has a whole bunch of eyeballs. Yeah, and especially um, along like the side. I didn't realize mm -hmm. how much. Yeah, there's there's what, a what lot would, happening. What do you call I, when the, a creature? The, ha uh, that yeah. thing. We we asked this before with a dragon. I don't think we looked into it. So what do you call the stretchy bit of gums? Maybe I don't know. That sounds it, so. Yeah. Well, okay, chat. If you have a toothy maw, and you need a descriptor for the bit of skin and tendon that is there to uh, assist with the giantness of the toothy maw because you can only have a real toothy maw if your mouth can open fairly wide yeah. what do you call that what is that called? I am, like what we'll snakes be soliciting do. we'll be soliciting suggestions at this moment uh also if you so if you have suggestions or if you have questions make sure you put those in chat 
so Mars can grab those. And meanwhile, I'm going to wash a tongue, which, yes, I mm-hmm. was excited to say. I'm, I'm turning this upside tongue. down so I can actually get the roof of the mouth because this is a tight spot. Yeah, I haven't I haven't even gotten to the roof of the mouth yet. I was excited about that tongue. But look at that's just it. The tongue has all this texture that now we're getting the wash on. You can see it. Yeah. Well, and the roof of the mouth. Like here's yep. this part that how oh, yeah. often how often are you gonna look can at I... that part of the of a mimic? You're but I love that this it. has it's got yeah. ridges on the roof of the mouth. Like ruffles. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I might name this ruffles. Ooh. I did see from Lurking Writer there were already suggestions for names. Oh, really? I love that people are already in the name game with us. Yes, please. Thank yeah. you. Lurking Writer suggests Keggy, with obvious reasons, uh-huh. and Gotya. G-O-T-Y-A. <laughs> Gotya. Which gotcha. I do like. That is cute. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see what names yeah. come all around as we continue to work. But yeah, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Me too. Are we also washing the base? Yes, I'm doing the okay. base as well, just because, you know, might as well get to the base. Yeah. I like the how these mimics are like, or this one in specific is like risen off the base, mm-hmm. like it's jumping. Yeah. Like that That looks really that cool. That spring action is a lot of fun. The motion that's in the sculpture is one of my favorite thing about these. Oh, I got to get under the tongue too. Oh, yeah. And then trying to get into that little crook yep. of the tongue that's... Uh... Which, guess what we're painting first once this wash dries? tongue <laughs> i'm like is this a trick question no we're going for that tongue first because you're gonna have to do some uh poking and jabbing and oh. the chances of getting red elsewhere is strong but that way we can go back over and paint with the other colors and not worry about red getting where you don't want red to go that makes sense mm-hmm. that makes sense also also you get to attack the tongue first which is uh as people may have figured out the part that i'm the most excited about because i mean look at it mm-hmm Look, look, look at the, the reach on that tongue. Oh. Look at the extension. That's the moment in where you're like, well, this mini looks, this mini doesn't actually look that big. Rawr, I'm going to get you. Rawr. I don't know where that voice just came Think. from. It just did. Uh, it came from your DM life. That's, that's pretty where it comes much. From. Oh, good Lord. I think I got everywhere. Yeah. I just finished up myself here. I think so. All right. Yeah. So Moving you can on. see. Oh yeah, Still here we side by them. side. You can see the difference yeah. just by having one with a wash. It helps you see more of these details ahead of time, especially because here, look at all these eyeballs. Yeah, even on my uh, less than perfect camera for mini work, so I can't even really get this that close. Mm. Oh, it's way better. It, it is. Helps. It really it helps, helps so much. All right. Okay, I'm gonna keg. set that one down, and now we're gonna move over to the, to the keg mimic. Uh, and meanwhile, meanwhile. <laughs> I've, I've got a very kind question from chat. Um, mm-hmm. Sylphie DeShio. Hey, Lauren, do you have a Twitch I can follow? I don't do Twitter. Uh, hey, well, first off, I totally understand when someone says I don't have a specific social media because listen, there's 3 billion different social medias out there. And not everyone should or can keep up with all of them. And everybody's got to make a decision. I happen to pick Twitter uh, because that's the medium I enjoy. That's where I I follow the most people. Um, That's where I I feel like I can keep up with. Mm -hmm. Um, So that, that is the one that I have chosen. I do not have my own Twitch channel because I have been very fortunate in my online Twitch performing career which is an interesting thing to say, to be on other channels the vast majority of the time. So while I super duper appreciate that, um, I the Twitch channels you can find me on are right here. Um, you can find me on the Demiplane Twitch channel on Tuesdays. That's Demiplaner, Demiplane RPG uh, for their Twitch for our Children of Erte game that's going to be starting up on Tuesday that I'm not uh, at all nervous about mm-hmm. and excited. Totally cool. Um, and then every once in a while I show up other places. Um, I, I also on a regular basis show up on the D4 channel, but, um, that has, that has not been the case recently because they've fortunately gone back to being live and in person and they all live in Atlanta and I live in Seattle. Yes. So 
it happens. Uh, okay. But thank you for asking. I really appreciate it. Um, v, do you have another place people can follow the awesome things you do that you recommend? I do. Th well, definitely. Um, I tend to be most active on Twitter. You can find me over on Instagram as well. Facebook, I have left in the dust. I will check it every once in a blue moon. Not even kidding. Mm. Uh, just because, you know, Facebook and reasons. But uh, those are the two social media you can best find me on. However, you can find me here, obviously, for uh, Twitch stuff. And you can also find me uh, every Thursday over on Mini Terrain Domain, where uh, I play in Dawnbringers. And I'm really going to confuse the folks and say you can also find me Thursdays on Wizards Twitch and YouTube every so often when I uh, bring around my darling Dark Lord, Voronika, in Black Dice Society. There you go. Yep. So that <laughs> I almost that, that said me. something that was going to be a giant spoiler, and then oh, I decided yes, not to. No spoilers. I I thought about it. I thought about it, and I didn't. I didn't. There but definitely, go. definitely go check all of that out. But thank you for asking. Yes. Um. Ooh, we've got mm. a mini question from Finn seventy six. I picked up playing D anD D with my son at the local oh. game store after not playing since um, advanced D anD D back in the day. Oh, Very my. nice. Yes. So of course I need a mini. Uh huh. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I picked up the WizKids Elf Cleric. When should I do a base coat opposed to just painting without a base coat? And if uh, I do a base coat, would a gray or white be better than a black for the elf's fair skin? Okay, so clarification. When you're saying base coat, are you thinking primer or base color? Because there's a big mm. difference. If you mean primer, don't you dare, because these already have primer on them. It's a redundant step. Um... If you were doing things with base colors, you can basically take it out of the box and start painting it. That's the whole point of WizKids miniatures. They come pre-primed. That's why these are a glaring white uh, because they have a, it's actually like a white gray primer, but it translates to the human eye as more white. Um, so there's already a primer on this. Uh, if this is something where you're newer to miniature painting, honestly, what we're doing right now is a great step for beginner painters because it helps bring out more of the details and it makes it easier for you to see where you want to put your base colors which are the starting colors you want for your miniatures, not to be confused with a base coat of primer. Um, so you can really start with your base colors anytime you want to with your miniatures from WizKids. However, there's always one of those things with mini painting. However, if However. you're using a mini that is not from WizKids, more often than not, you will need to put on a base of primer to make sure that the other colors stick to the miniature because not all paints like to play nicely with plastic and your primer is sort of your insurance policy. So that I hopefully has helped answer your questions. And if um, it is not, go ahead and put another yeah. question in chat and we'll catch up with you. Uh, sorry yeah. if I was making weird faces, but no, uh, as V fine. was giving that absolutely excellent explanation, I realized that the, the keg mimic, mimic, I'm not sure how to describe this or if you'll even see it, has these two tiny little thin arms. Uh-huh, yeah. Like these spaghetti Where arms. Where the bolts are. Like the little, yeah. they come out as uh, tentacles. And I was having a hard yeah. time focusing on mm -hmm. that in order to paint it. I was like, yeah. There's also an eyeball underneath. Did you notice that one? The eyeball I got, okay. but it was it was these two spindly tentacle arms. My eyes just said, I don't want to focus on that. And I just couldn't get the paintbrush to work for a uh -huh. moment. Uh -huh. So... I apologize if you were seeing me give some really weird yeah, facial totally cool. expressions while I was desperately trying to focus. What be that? Yeah, but I think I think it got everything. So there you go. Wash Same. that off. Yeah. Uh, always make sure you cap your washes when you are done. You don't want those things to uh, dehydrate because then it starts to concentrate the pigment, and then you don't have a wash anymore. You have a glaze. Mm. <laughs> but we are and done. Glazes. With the glazes we are. Done. are uh, Still pigmented, but thinner than a basic paint. Done. Ta -da. Get back in your box. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I was not expecting to hear that. Get back in your box. <laughs> what did I, I do? I, I am in my box right here. Right. <laughs> here, I'm going to leave my box. <laughs> Get out of the box. Look, look at me leaving my box. Uh -huh. Okay. So back to the other mini. As yes. Hopefully chest. it's. Hopefully it's dried. It is getting dry. So I think what we'll do with this one, uh, my mouth is still a little damp. Well, yeah. It's mouth, not my mouth. I it's mean, mouth is still a little damp. So I don't want to go quite in yet with um, what we're going to do for the mouth. But 
I do feel confident that we can start working on these eyeballs. Eyeballs. The many, many eyeballs. So yeah. we'll start doing the eyes on the chest and then we'll hop over to the eyes on the barrel mimic. And then we will address the tongue situation. Uh, <laughs> so you can see below here, our official Idol Champions art has a more reddish tongue. Uh, however, it sometimes mimics have purplish tongues. So what we can always do is one has a purple tongue and one has a red tongue if you want to do it that way. Ooh. I think I might do... Mm. I think I might do the red on the keg because then it kind of hints towards wine and wine can come in barrels. This is how my brain's working for picking the color for the tongue and then do purple on the chest mimic. Okay. I, see, I was just trying to picture the wine barrel or not the wine barrel, but I guess it's going to be a wine barrel for you that just yeah. the keg chest and thinking, okay, it's going to be like, uh, there's going to be browns. There's going to mm. be silvers. What's going to yeah. look good yeah. in contrast. Uh, I could go with either. Yeah. Okay. Either would work. For the moment, frankly. we're going with eyes. Now we're going to go, we're, we're going for the eyes. Okay. I Ooh. have my little wet palette over here, uh, but you can use just a plain old paper plate. Tried and true. That's what Lauren uses. I use the wet palette from Red Grass Games just because the folks were kind enough to send them to me. And I actually like this one before I haven't liked any. So I keep using it. And we're going to jump in with sunny yellow or sun yellow, not sunny. And that is basically from the Vallejo game color line. And if you don't have Alejo, what you're looking for is your classic bright yellow, primary I color did. yellow. I'm already, already, already. I gotta grab the box. I forgot sun yellow. yellow. There we go. Sun yellow. Like, all right. Ugh. Okay. Sun yellow. sun yellow. And I'm oh, assuming we're not gonna need very much. No. Well, no, just a little dab will do ya mm. situation. And I am using a detail brush. So in this case, I'm using my 10 over zero to get started on that one. And I know if anyone caught me, I did lick the tip of my brush. It's what I do. <laughs> At least you got it before you got the paint on it. Yes, I tried to do that before and after rinsing. I was like, oh. Have I slipped in the past? Yes, does it taste good? No. But the paint mm. is non-toxic if that helps. So I'm gonna go in and I'm <laughs> going to. That, that's good to know for those who have maybe uh, pets or small children in case there is an accident. I mean, anything is toxic enough if you have too much. Let's put it that way. That, that's true. Um, All right, so eyeballs in yellow. Eyeballs in yellow. Just gonna Ooh. eye you up. And this is one of those moments where I'm glad that I know that I don't have to be perfectly in that sphere because we're gonna we're gonna paint around. Yeah, we'll get the lids. Because especially that. That it's not the one in the back, but like because they go front, back, front, back they a have little like bit. This staggery thing happening, yeah. Which is nice, and it looks super cool, and it's in a way it's easier to paint, but mm -hmm. in a but I I already see I yeah. already see I got yellow places, but that's okay. that's okay. And if it helps for control, you can see here I'm steepling, and that's basically where you rest and you get pressure points set up. So I'm pressing my wrist together. I'm going to use my pinky as an anchor against the pad of my thumb over on this side and then it gives me more finite control for painting yeah that is that's one of the reasons i moved my light over here so that i could mm -hmm. better do that and steeple at the same time yeah. oh we got more questions from chess yay so i'm so obviously <laughs> jacob blackman is a fan of Black Dice Society Yay. because they they are asking some questions about Voronika. Uh -huh. Now, I'm going to um, not ask these specific questions to avoid some spoilers for those who might be catching up on Black Dice Society. Mm -hmm. And you are more than welcome to not answer these if you okay. don't want to. Um, but Jacob Blackman is asking basically... Um, what has she turned into? <laughs> <laughs> she has turned into a living nightmare, essentially. Uh, mm. And I'm gonna honestly, it's she's um she's gone through a transformation. I'm trying to keep this as spoiler free as possible. Yeah, she has definitely been through different renditions of what she is. Um, all very intriguing and different. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, she's at a very interesting point in life right now or in life, I guess. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, uh, on life because she, you know. Because, you know. Reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Which, once again, uh, for forgive us if we're being. I'm trying to be so good about not being too spoilerish. Yeah. It's not that, that we don't. Whoa. What? <laughs> Sorry. What um, happened? I just did some research. Uh huh. And we're going to finish answering your question about Voronika, but I now have visual aids for the the thing we were talking about, the that part of the jaw oh, that yes. we don't know what the oh. name of it is. Oh, Martin. <laughs> when did you do it? Mars. 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 Sorry. Mars. Yeah. But let's finish. Was there anything else you wanted to add about Voronika and with the, the idea that, of course, there's mystery here? She is a complex and convoluted creature. Let's put it that way. Yeah. All right. Is there any, and then I'm going to ask a question real quick. Are there any other eyes besides the four on the top? See, I always translate these two in the back as eyes. Back here, because there's like oh. this little lid feature to them. Oh, interesting. There, there are kind of like little horns up here, but for me, these always look like eyes. So I've always painted them as eyes. Hmm. If you choose to do so, I then go for it. If not, you can leave those as horns. I might leave those as horns because at least on my mimic, that's where one of the um, mold lines is. Okay, so there you go. And so I might, I might, they they look more like horns to me. Um, and I'm afraid if I make them eyes, they're just gonna accentuate the mold line. Mm -hmm. That's totally mm. cool. And I'm gonna go. Uh, and then the we're moving over to the keg to do same with thing the with keg. the keg, right? With yep. this one's the, got the eye under the. Ch yeah, the eye under the chin. The one eye. Is it? Hold on. I don't see another one. Mars, we're, we're going to get to that. Yes, it's just the one. It's just the one. Okay. So what did uh, Mars find? Okay, so Mars found us. Uh, there is literally, uh, for our friends and neighbors in the chat at home, there there is now what looks like a crocodile skull diagram in our backstage chat which is probably the most epic backstage chat ever <laughs> of all time. And um, that specific, the, the maw muscle thing, it is the abductor mandibula externus, externus? Superficialis. Superfilas? Super? So an abyss. Ab <laughs> A-B-E-S. Yeah. Yeah. It's an yeah. abyss. <laughs> It's a super, super fielas. So it does. It has a name, though. Yeah, that, it's it's got an impressive scientific name. I I'm happy to know it has an actual name as opposed to the thing. Uh, okay. Um, Mars put the the actual full name into chat, which is super helpful. Oh, we're also doing adductor um, mandibula externus superficialis. Superficialis. Yeah. Superficialis. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was actually superficialist. It's like supercalifragilistic. But... <laughs> Could you like, imagine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, now I'm just picturing mimics in um, Mary Poppins. That but would make things interesting. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Bert wouldn't survive long. So we're doing all of these little bumps on top as well in the yellow? Yep. Or are oh, they also eyes? Those are eyes. Oh, wow. Those are all the eyes. I... Did not I, I, I see you. All right, here we go. It's, it's going to be the bumpy time. Bloop. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And bloop. We, we are um, not going to worry about pupils on these. <laughs> I don't think there is a brush small enough to even try. There are ways to do it, but it is so dang fussy. I can't imagine. But I... I also can now that I've done this. Mm -hmm. But like, wow, I I could not. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't even know if the toothpick would be small enough. No, it's not. I have for um, PC miniatures. I've done things like actually taken. Well, I jokingly have said a cat whisker, but that actually does work really well. Um, <laughs> you can also take like a strand of hair and bloop, and there are tools in nail art. Um, mm. that you can get those and they're metal and they have like little points and they're so fine. Or you can do something like a sewing needle or a sewing pin, straight pin. Oh, those will work too. 
that that makes sense yeah. that like a little sewing pin that's yeah. something that i i would actually have a, a sewing mm -hmm. needle that i could grab because i was thinking the the toothpick while it's a it's a fine point it's nowhere near i think as fine as no. like especially for the the eyes on this side yeah are literally just tiny tiny little tiny. little okay but They're i think i got them all yep i just got them all too so now we'll get into working on our tongues Yes. I really want to do the chest with like the classic gnarly purple. Okay. So I'm going to go purple with this one. But if you want to make this red, you'll just take your bloody red and mix in like what we've done in the past with gaping moss, like we just just did with the for uh, yeah. Take your bloody red and add in a touch of black to make a deep maroon. I think I'm going to join you in the purple because okay. even though the mimic that's on the overlay that's from Idol Champions, that, that mm -hmm. that's the one you fight, um, it's mostly a reddish. It's got also that purple hue in it. It's got a little bit yeah. of both. So yeah. why not both? Okay. So... so I'm grabbing Bloody Red, Ultramarine Blue, and Black from the game color line from Vallejo. Basic translation, you have your classic red, your classic blue, I'm talking primary colors here, and black. And we'll start off with more red than blue because we want to make this a purplish tone. And by adding in the black, it'll make it a darker purple tone. All right. And it's a it it's not a big mini, but it's a big tongue. So what it's, size? I am doing, let's say, a dime puddle. That's about the size of a dime. Okay. And then um, a P of blue. Okay. Burp on me. There we go. Yeah, like a P of Burp. blue and a sunflower seed of black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the tiniest, the tiniest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're starting to pull out, but you can see my little collection going on here for ratios. That's kind of aesthetically pleasing. Isn't it? It is. I want to try. Have you seen these? They're called acrylic pores and you use craft no. paint. <gasps> Okay, next time I'm in Seattle, you and I are going to play. Okay. Um, I, I, I like the sound of it. Okay, so acrylic pores, you said. acrylic pores, and they're quite fascinating. It's where you take layers of um, acrylic paints and you pour them into like a solo cup type of thing. Yeah. And, oh, I might actually need to add a little bit more blue. Um, is Yeah, I was just wondering if mine is turning out, I think, darker than I yeah. want it. Would you add more blue in that I'm case? I'm going to add more blue, yes. Okay. Um, so anyways, you add different layers of colors of acrylic paint, like the craft paint you find at Michael's, etc. And then this is gonna be purpley. it's still going to be a deep color, but you want to have more of a purple tone than a red tone. Yeah. Um, and as you put these layers into the cup, um, you then would have like a canvas, like just plain canvas on a frame. Yeah. And you literally would take the cup and start pouring the cup over the canvas like it just in their like random pattern or whatever and you just do a pour like that and then you shake the canvas and let all this paint kind of like pool and disperse itself around okay and you get some there are youtube videos for this and they're quite sad and they're quite relaxing so if you want something that is even more stress-free than our um bob ross mini painting stream <laughs> <laughs> then definitely go and check that out um, I'm trying to picture pores. this, and I feel like this would uh, turn out very Jackson Pollock. Kind of, yeah. It's very abstract looking, but they're okay. so neat because what goes into the cup doesn't necessarily come out as you would anticipate, but what comes out is so cool. Um, but and the fact like that you get chance. to do it yourself is yeah. also like making your own art and then making mm -hmm. something that is, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. I feel so. like mine is still a dark purple. Yeah, mine's definitely a dark purple. It's almost like a dark mauve. It's actually the color of my shirt. I have matched my shirt. Good grief. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I think I want to go a little bit even more lighter because okay. mine is still darker compared to you. Is that once again, still more blue? A little blue? bit more blue. Yeah. Yeah. Cause mine is still kind of a, yeah, there we go. Right on my thumb. Okay. So while you get started on the tongue, I'm going to continue to mix. Cause... And I'm going to get the uh, abyss area too. That's what I'm calling it from now on. The A-B-E-S, the abyss. I mean, that makes sense. And then Mars, you'll need to keep that reference handy for us in the future. <laughs> yes, yes. For next week in the backseat. For next week and then for the rest of our lives, basically. Uh -huh. um, hopefully after a couple of episodes of calling it that, yeah. 
Yeah. We we will we'll be know. very yeah. very well versed in what that thing is called because you know what this is D and D and D and D is all about the toothy maw. Mm-hmm. Oh God, there's so many toothy maws. I I might have I might have turned this into a blue. Hold on, hold uh, on. What have I done? And this happens. <laughs> the back and forth definitely can be a happening. Let's see. And for anyone not comfortable in mixing colors, just grab a dark purple. You can start right with that. Uh, all right, it's 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 a little better. I've got like a plum going on. Plum will work. Yeah, I think plum plum will work. I'm a I'm a little worried about adding any more blue because uh, there was a moment here as as you all heard where I'm going. Hmm, it's drifting. Huh. I might have I might have gone wrong. I might have to do this all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Something mistakes has gone have dreadfully been, wrong. But those aren't mistakes. That's just describing. That, that's just describing mini painting, which is every once in a while looking down and going, oh, whoopsie. <laughs> yep. Now All here's right. the fun part. Trying to get the roof of the mouth. And I'm oh. actually, I'm going to switch from my detail brush. And I'm going to go up to um, that. Do I want to use the number five again? Yeah, I'm going to go back up to what we used for the washes. And, and you're just... going to get the, the purple on the top of the mouth, too. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm going to the bigger brush, because it'll oh. smoosh out better for me. And since I use it for washing, I'm not really worried if I end up destroying this brush by literally shoving paint in its mouth. There you go. All right. I will I will join you in the larger brush. Yeah. Um, as the lurking writer has asked, has anyone heard of a mimic masquerading as a bag of holding? And is that even possible? Yes. And I yes. mean... <laughs> I mean, it, it's whatever your DM says is possible. Yep. Um, I mean, yeah, they would just have to look like a bag with the, mm -hmm. the smiley face or the frowny face on it. Um, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to continue up the ruse when uh, someone tried to put something inside of it. Oh, heck no. But I think at the point in where someone is putting something inside of the bag, that that's it's when the mimic strikes. Late. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think there's no rule I don't think that. mimics just, are thinking too happens. much more long term than that. Yeah. So as you can see, it's it's getting into the recesses a little bit better using this bigger guy. Yeah. And I can. Oh, always... and you're also getting on the 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 thingy. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally getting on the teeth and whatever, and on the uh, abyss, a b e s. But it looks like uh, it looks like you did that the abyss stuff on purpose. I did. Yes, that was okay. intentional. Good, good, good. Because if sure. you look at snakes and stuff, that is still part of their inner mouth area. Mmm. Snakes and alligators and. Bears, it's oh my. amazing how many reptilian features many monsters have. I think reptiles are one of those creatures that human beings are hardwired to be cautious, careful, mm -hmm. uh, nervous, scared of because they do react in ways that are very different than mammals. Oh, totally. And uh, so that's that's my unscientific guess. I'm sure there's somebody uh, who knows way more about that than I do, but <laughs> but yeah, that's they they definitely have that alien approach to a lot of things, mm -hmm. and which can be uh, super appealing when you're looking for creatures to model stuff after, or if you want to play like a, a lizard folk or a dragonborn or something, and you want to go very very different. Um, but yeah, I think just in general, the the anatomy of most lizards make most human beings go, ooh. Yeah. Ugh. But I find it fascinating. All right, well, I'm happy to announce yeah. that <laughs> while the color of this purple gave me lots of concern, mm -hmm. I am very happy with how it turned out. Excellent. Oh, yes, that's so, lovely. Yes, it is It is very much a plum, but I am, oh, I am I very happy with it. Good, you should be. I was very concerned for a little bit that I was going to have a blue tongue. <laughs> I mean, you could. You could, but I, I really was uh, gunning for e either the purple or the red. And so blue would have been not ideal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I could have just repainted. That's okay. This is true. You can always go back. And you can see I am not being careful or what have you because, yes, I have gotten paint elsewhere. But this is why I wanted to do the mouth first on both of them. Yeah, that makes sense. It's just easier to paint where you're... It reduces exactly how much cleanup you will have to worry about later on if you know you're working in layers. Um, so that is why. 
So that's actually an excellent question because we talk about that a lot with these minis that we're doing. Yes. But how do you decide if you've got a new mini that you're approaching, how do you take a look at it with that analytical eye and say, this is the order I want to do things so that I have, say in this case, the mm -hmm. least amount of stuff to clean up later? That's where you play the looking at section should be like, if this, then what? So if I paint this first, then what could I possibly get on it later? Mm. And you look over each area and you kind of, and it gets easier the more experience you become with painting miniatures. But inevitably things like mouths, don't worry about the teeth because you'll get to those at the end. Uh, things like eyes, if you're dealing with very bright and vivid eyes like these yellow ones, it's actually easier to get those done first and then be careful around the eyes than to try and, because the back and forth between a yellow with a paint, trying to hide a yellow sometimes is not the easiest thing. Oof, um, yeah. So, that sounds that sounds difficult. Yeah. You kind of just honestly it's like you sit you sit with the mini for a little bit and let the mini sort of become something you analyze and figure out what the best approach would be for it. Hmm. And meanwhile, I have noticed that you're also uh going for lips. Oh, I'm doing the gum line, you betcha. You bet. Uh I I guess yeah, that would just be gums. There mm -hmm. are no lips. There's just teeth and gums. Yeah. There's only two themes. Well, Help. Yep. Okay, then. And then here's the other fun part, because you can see this is sort of a gum line floating around up here. Oh, yeah. So. And what's your stopping point? Feathering. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, sort of blend the brown into the gum line, because with mimics, the way they morph, sometimes they don't always have like a nice clean delineation between features. That makes sense. Yeah. So uh, somewhere below where most of the eyes are, yeah. keep the purple and yeah, we'll, I'm just basically, we'll do the feathering later. Yeah, you can even feather the purple now. Like just do this with it. Okay. And this is also that, that moment that we were just talking about with the eyes mm -hmm. and, and the yellow and being a little cautious. And so I'm just being mm -hmm. a little cautious. Oh, although that's I've already been able away. to clean up something, so that's good. Yeah. Oh, and I should check out, uh, I've moved around my setup a little bit, which makes it a little easier to talk into the microphone because I put my light below the microphone so that I can be painting and you can all still hear me pretty good. But that does mean I've been not as good about keeping an eye on the chat. Oopsie. <laughs> it's been a little bit of this Oopsie. back and forth. <laughs> um, Cassius335 wants to know, what do you do if your model of a mimic is in fact a real mimic? I mean, that's mimicception right there, right? Yeah, mimception. Mimception. And I think experienced uh, DMs are, or experienced players, I should say, sometimes have a hard time if, if a classic chest shows up. Mm -hmm. Not immediately going, it's a mimic. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check it for signs of life. Yes, this, this, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, this is just a gold chest sitting uh -huh. in this dungeon. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And my birthday was yesterday. There we go. <laughs> uh, and yes, yeah. the teeth have some purple on them, but quite frankly, it's easier to get purple on the teeth than to worry about not getting purple on the teeth. Yeah, definitely. Ah. Uh... I think I missed a little bit of that interior jaw stuff. So I'm just going to grab that real quick. Yeah, I'm playing you. Did I miss a spot, King? Yeah, because after we get done with the second mimic, ostensibly, this will be the end of this, of uh, this, this purple. Color, yeah. And the advantages to the, um, the wet palette that B was talking about yeah. is that will help the paint stay wet yep you put a lid on it's got a rubber seal right there yep. and it keeps the moisture going the advantage to the paper plate is cheap and easy yes. and recyclable however next week if i need purple i have to remix this yeah <laughs> so it's this this is the moment where i'm like did i really get everything mm -hmm. i might we might go to the keg if there's any purple on the keg and then I might come back to this yeah. mimic, to this mini. Do you want to just... do 
the purple on the keg or did you want to do the red tongue on the keg? I want to do the red tongue on the keg. I just wasn't sure if we were also going to use this no. purple on. We're no. not? Okay. No. That so is don't worry good about to yeah. know. This is, this is the one that's getting the purple and the other one's getting more of the red. Okay. I think Sounds I'm happy like a with plan. that. Hold on, I'm pulling up from under. Yeah, I think I, I think, think I'm good. I think I'm good. All right, so I'm gonna let you dry. Actually, ooh, real quick. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I was worried about the roof of the mouth, but I did not worry about the uh, the bottom of the mouth. Mm -hmm. Trying to get purple on the bottom too. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Then get I still under. need to do that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, microphone. Yeah. Hi, everybody at home. I, I I hope you didn't mind hearing my shirt. Mm hmm. All right, but fortunately, I just I just got to get a little bit under the tongue. I'm just gonna poke poke at it with my big brush. Poke 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 poke. Hey, hold on, hold, hold still. Go. I'm gonna get your people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Now so now. Now here's the fun thing because mm -hmm. we have that yellow eyeball underneath. We will have to be careful in a certain area for the keg. Yeah. So just keep that in mind when you go to paint. Um, but this one you said you want to do more red. So we'll yeah. shoot red. I think this so one. So in that case, it's uh, let's say three parts bloody red to one part black or half a part black even. Okay. Tiny, tiny bit of black yeah. to the, the red. I, I love how in chat they're they're now all talking about suspicious mimics. Um, Bay Neon, I played in a game many years ago where the DM had just read up on mimics uh, and we encountered four in one session. Oh, From Lord. then on, every chest piece of furniture and large sack was prodded with long poles or just ignored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, th that's a, that is a thing that can happen. Uh, when you're a DM is if you get excited about something and then accidentally your players just become uh, that much more used to being scared about a certain thing mm -hmm. and they will never stop. It will, nope. your players, no matter how much you never have a mimic attack them ever, ever again, they will just always assume. Mm -hmm. And I say that even though I have been both a DM and a player who has been in both of those situations. Yep. <laughs> uh, Todd Kenrick can tell you that he can't even say wish around me without shuddering, without me shuddering. Uh, it's just <laughs> a thing. Or Kira, yeah, it's, you saw what happened to Orkira when wish came up. Uh, and, and, and sometimes just in regular conversation. So, mm -hmm. all right. Oh. I think I got, I think I got the red we want. Yeah. And see, it helps to see that they are definitely two different colors. There's your purple, there's your red. And I did not yeah. hurt myself. I got messy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> little little <Okay>. caveat. <laughs> Come here, keg. Mm -hmm. All right. And are we also doing the whole ah, inside of the mouth? Yeah, we are doing the whole inside of the mouth. All right. So I'm going to so, go back to the bigger brush. Yeah, I dipped it with the detail brush first because I wasn't thinking. So I am going to get the upper gum line here. Yeah, no, we'll I'm, I'm just going to start poking away at the top of that, top of that toothy maw. Yes. Just, just poking away. Poke, 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 poke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots. I feel like a dentist sometimes in these moments. It's just like, okay, open up. Open oh, up can you move aw. a little that way? Mm-hmm. Can you move a little this way? Um. Uh, <laughs> Mars says my favorite classic mimic trick is that the chest is really a chest, but the stuff inside the chest, has the that's mimics. a mimic. Yeah. Like the good old horde scarab monster. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good. good. One. I thought I saw someone in chat talking about the door as a mimic. Oh um, yes. Doors have been mimics in the past for me. And that's yeah. terrifying. Yep. I've also encountered a bed mimic with uh Cantriel. Thank God she can misty step is all I'm going to say. Yeah. Well, and I know for a while, um, I think I heard on the C team, I think uh, Jerry said it when he was uh, either playing or DMing at some point, he was just like, um, the door is a mouth, it swallows you, the entire house is a mimic, you're dead. And mm -hmm. it was a joke. It wasn't, It you know, it didn't really right, happen, but right. I was so amused by the deadpan, you know, the, the door is a mouth. Yep. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. Well, that's horrific. Bye -bye. And, and there we go. Yep. Um, I have not used a mimic as a DM. 
Uh, I, I have encountered a mimic as a player, but in a very different sort of scenario, mm -hmm. because um, oh, on D four, right. yeah. So on D four, they have Sasha specifically has a pet mimic, mm -hmm. Biblio, and the reason they're called Biblio is because they they uh, for a while looked like a book. That that was kind of their preferred form to be in. Um, and the funny thing about Biblio is most of the rest of the crew are uh, wary about this this mimic, mm -hmm. you know, for, for some decent reasons. Yeah. Also, uh, despite the fact that Biblio has proven to be kind and gentle and wonderful, Biblio is also incredibly sticky. And so hugs with Bib Biblio last until uh, either you can extricate yourself or someone can help you. Uh, Biblio is the reason that Orkira and Harold spent six years in a bag together because Biblio accidentally went in the bag first and then Harold went oh. in to go rescue Biblio and then Orkira went in to go rescue Harold. Mm -hmm. So uh, they spent six years together. Oh, Lord. And so when I joined D4, you know, m many, many moons later as a the regular guest star for a while, Biblio had grown quite a bit and was now like a coat rack or <laughs> something like that. And the, the most recent thing that had happened is Biblio had started to speak. Oh. And knew Orkira's name. Now, Orkira loves Biblio. She thinks Biblio is awesome. She thinks he's adorable. Doesn't mind that he's sticky. Uh, but, the, the fact that Biblio now starts to uh, say people's names has has started to bother some other people, though. <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah, it's interesting seeing those reactions uh, at this this mimic pet that Seisha has. I think it actually called Seisha Mommy at one point, which is adorable and also horrifying and yes. adorable. And horrifying. <laughs> and horrifying and adorable. It's still horrifying. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. All right, I think that's the inside of the mouth. So, yeah. Moving, moving back to the smaller, smaller brush for the gums. Because, yeah. Ah, Missouri in chat. I obsess over homebrew, and one of my latest projects is a dread domain of mimics. Oh, now that Ooh. is fascinating. That is. I can't remember, is it in Tasha's or is it, I can't remember where this piece of art is, but it's a, a recent piece of art showing two people sitting on a porch uh -huh. uh, overlooking a field. And after a moment of looking, it is very obvious the entire house is a bunch of mimics. The chair is a mimic, the, the house is a mimic, the rafters are mimics, it's, it's all mimics. Um, it's that's, the, I'm me. being told it is Tasha's. It Thank is Tasha's. you. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what I picture with the dread domain of Bibli of, of mimics. Uh, all right. And now, now it's time to get around the gums. Yep. This is actually a little easier on the top because it has the, the nice else. keg. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm just going to not worry about the teeth. Teeth can get all red and bloody fat, and we can just clean them up later. Yep. Teeth will get cleaned, and and you know what? If they end up it being adds, bloody later, oh well. It adds to the effect. Yeah. Yeah. These are not biblio. These mimics will not be cute. No. <laughs> At least mine will not be. Not not a face a mother could love. I did have my paintbrush do a hair split on me, so I'm just gonna touch up my yellow eyeball underneath. Oh, like a, a hair got loose yeah. while you were painting yeah. and then and then it touched the yellow and of course there's like this odd, I'm gonna go off from under camera. There's this little oddball bit of yellow red that got on the yellow. I'm like, nope, that should not have been there. Yeah. I'm right at that point too. Like I'm right at the point with the eyeball. I'm like oh, right, yeah. here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. But thank you for saying that because that made me double check my brush. Yeah. I'm like, how how my brush doing? I was not looking at my brush and I touched and it went. Pew! Yeah. Now, did term. you 
just get above the eyeball for the the gums, or do you think the gums go like it all the way down? All and the way around. And around. It does okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good wow. to know. Yes. It's an eyeful, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, eyeball. I got gotcha. you. Got the eye. I'm super proud of this mm -hmm. eyeball. Good. I'm not <laughs> going to get red on it. I'm not going to get red on it. I am steepled. I am relaxed. I'm one with the mini. Oh, this is so close. I mean, the mimic will, the mimic, the, I said, doing it again. The mimic will happily become one with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of these is going to be named Mimi. I, yes. I mean, at this point, yeah. it's, it's a requirement. Mm hmm I think uh, I'll make the chest Mimi, and this is definitely going to be Ginny. Say hi to Ginny. I have a reason for Ginny, and this is going to be Mimi. Well, I will also continue to take suggestions from chat. Uh, I think <laughs> I think I'll probably name mine next week, but that works. Whew, all right, done. I got it. And you can see one has it. the purple and one has the red tongue. Blah. Blah. Actually, they match our shirts. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I'm I'm wearing the shirt that is an appropriate response to when you are attacked by a, a mimic, which is a uh, fireball. fireball. <laughs> Fireball. Always Perfection. an appropriate response. Perfection. Yes. Okay, so that takes care of eyeballs. And if this is dry enough, I want to go back to dry brushing this tongue. And I'm going to take, I still have some of this color left. Yay. Uh, which one? The purple that we mixed. Oh, yeah. I think mine is still wet enough. So... And I'm going to add yeah. in a touch, like just a little bit of bone white to lighten the color up. So remember I said we won't need the dry brush? I forgot we had to do the mouths like this. So you'll need to dry okay. brush. I, that was not by Ed. You know what? It, it's right here in my box. Come here, box. I was, I was smart and I put all of the other stuff that I needed in a chair right here. Uh -huh. So instead of being like, I have to, to scoot off camera, I could just be like, chair, come here. And now come I can grab. All my stuff. And then stuff. Need my drop brush. The right stuff. There we go. <laughs> Easily done. <laughs> you can do it. So I have a slightly lighter shade now mixed up. You can see. A lighter shade of pale? Yeah, lighter shade of plum. <laughs> yeah, that works. And uh, uh, uh. How, can you show that again? How light did you go? Not too terrible. You can go lighter if you want to. I didn't go too, too much lighter, but okay. if you want to take, I want like uh, two shades above the original. Okay. I'm just, because <laughs> my purple and your purple are two different purples, I'm uh -huh. just doing some translating in my, yeah. in my color palette head. Uh, it's a weird yeah. thing to say. I just saw in the chat, Jeremy is asking, did I just drop a new kids on the block reference? You Bet your lives I did. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus I mean, points why not? for those who heard it. Why not? Um, <laughs> and I should check on in. Oh, uh, the lurking writer says, question. On Champions of Lore, Aaron mentioned the watery death domain. Yeah, there's a lot of weird domains in, in older are. editions of D&D. Lots and lots and lots. Um, if that domain is also located, it's also a location, and there's a mimic there, would it be Davy Jones's locker? I mean, I'd clap, but I'm holding a mimic. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> basically, basically, yes. In short I mean, response, yes. I mean, it, it sounds like you're just, um, you're ready to <laughs> write an adventure. That's yeah. what it sounds like. I'm here for it. So yeah. basically just doing a dry brush, floating it across the gum lines, and then I'll take it down the tongue. Just to build a little definition to the detail. Yeah. But again, doing this first because this will be tricky to do once we get other colors on. And also because for me, it helps because now I don't have to worry about uh, coming up with this purple again to mm -hmm. mix in. Yeah. Um, that which is super helpful. Yes, it is. And then the goal is just to not to air br airbrush. 
Not to dry brush I mean, the eyes. Yes. <laughs> don't don't do airbrushing. Do dry brushing. Yes. Airbrushing is a different skill. It is. And there's some uh, fantastic. Artists yeah, Luke and I were actually playing around with an airbrush, and it is super fun, but not yeah. not necessarily good for fine detail work on a mini. Some people can do some incredible work with their airbrushes, and to them, I bow down, and we're not worthy. I have try. I have an airbrush. It's great yeah. when I want to mass prime miniatures. Um, oh yeah. Or if I want to give things like an OSL, I'll use that and like my. <laughs> I just did the sound effect. <laughs> or I'll, instead of saying spray, what's um, I'll spray from a distance, the white, um, to add the highlighting from certain angles. Um, and, uh, for certain areas where I only want the white to be, but I really don't use my airbrush at all. Really at all. It's, yeah. it's rarely I will pull it out because I'm, I am a paintbrush fan. I love using brushes and I love seeing what I can do with brushes on my own. Yeah. But you know, to each their own. Exactly. And certainly I mean, if people um, can do that with the airbrush, that's amazing. There's an artist uh, who works with both Vallejo and WizKids, Angel, and the work he does is phenomenal with his airbrush. Has a YouTube channel, Angel uh, Heraldes, I want to say. Very cool. Angel Vidal Heraldes, or I, I flip his names around sometimes because uh, sometimes he'll use one and sometimes he uses the other, but fantastic artist on YouTube. And does like visual tutorials. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm finding this dry brushing is really, really helping in that part of the mouth that nobody is talking about because mm -hmm. we can't say the whole word. Um, yes. It's A B S. Yeah, that thing. That's really helped the the stretchy part of that mm -hmm. stand out a lot more. Yeah. And now I'm trying to work on the bottom of the tongue. I know there's also a name for that part of the tongue that's on the bottom that that little extra flap of skin. Yeah. There's a specific name to that too. Don't know what it is. I should know it because one of my kids tore it one time. Ouch. Yeah, I, Ouch. Have, I have a child who's accident prone. <laughs> oh, I missed, did I miss a spot? I missed a spot on this thing. I, I got through most of my childhood without any major accidents, um, but uh, tiny tongue content warning. Mm. I was jumping on my parents' bed and I bit off the, the tip of my tongue. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. Ouch. I mean, fortunately, fortunately, I was young enough that, um, you know, it grew back. That's good. <laughs> uh, apparently hasn't affected my oboe playing at all. There you uh, go. I was super, super young. Like, I barely remember it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's... That was probably one of the more worse accidents I had as a child. And then I, I'm pretty much an indoor child. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like I was outdoors doing very much. Luke has all sorts of stories of being Boy. out in the Canadian wilderness and oh, getting sure. in trouble. Yeah. Okay. So here you can see the dry brushing on my fellow. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. This brings those ridges out a little bit more. Um, and, ah, ooh, thank ooh, you, chat. Ah. Mm? Frenulum. Frenulum, yes, thank you it's very a, much. It is a frenulum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that um, thing. <laughs> now, I'm looking over at the chat, and uh, Safe2 is the person who said that, but if, if somebody else in chat also got us a, a frenulum, thank you. Thank you for getting us words. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. We, we do a lot of wording and every once in a while we forget one. It's an anatomy class and you don't realize it. <laughs> well, that's art, right? That is. Yeah, totally. My, is. Yeah. Luke used to be a nurse before he became an artist. And he talks about how, how useful that is on a very regular basis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. I'm trying to be really so, good about drying off this dry brush. Yeah. Now I'm going to go back to our original, well, the other color, the red that we just did. Okay. Same thing. I'm adding in some bone white. Okay. <laughs> Greetings, ladies of the brush blade. I just looked over at chat and that's what I just saw. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, Irene UK. And yes, welcome. I love it. Ladies of the brush blade. So, you know. And some dude chillin' is like, love the phrase indoor child as it implies both outside and feral. <laughs> <laughs> feral. 
outside and, and inside. I was an indoor child. I, and I mean that in the, I didn't play outside, but hey, you know. <laughs> oh, I was not expecting that giggle. Thank you. Um. <laughs> I will leave you with that. Um. Uh, yes, 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 I'm here for that. I'm here for oh. all of that statement. Yes. Uh, Naskin says, if mimics can talk, can they mimic other people's voices? God, that's terrifying. That's, that's, that's how you get Kenku. I was going to say. I mean, that's not how you really get Kenku, but I like the idea. <laughs> All right. And so, so you are, same kind just, of thing. This yeah, is the red. Cool. It's the red. What I'm doing at the bottom one with the eye is I'm actually pulling back and away. And just very lightly hitting it. Ah, All right. To avoid the eyeball. All right, come here, keg. It is time for more, mm -hmm. more mouth time. <laughs> <laughs> Javik Shepard has a question. If you read the entire dictionary to a mimic, would it mimic? Would a mimic be intelligent enough to hold a conversation? Not a standard mimic out of the DMG. No, but. Are there uh, variants and are there DMs out there who would make that happen? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hi. It me. I mean, we were just talking about Biblio. Yep. So, and, and I, uh, yeah. I was going to say, and the whole thing with Ginny is, you know, I did do a keg mimic in one of the games that I ran. And uh, Dr. B's character, Tim, tamed it. Mm hmm. That was a fun role. Yeah. Yes. It was one of those things. Goes, can, can I try? Can I like try and, you know, win it over? And I'm thinking, let's just this is too much fun. The chat was enjoying it. I'm like, OK, let's let's make this a dice roll. Yeah. Wouldn't you know, he got a mm -hmm. crit and I got a one. Yep. I'm like, you have a pet mimic. <laughs> that's that's how D&D &D works. The mm -hmm. dice will always make the most ridiculous thing happen. Mm hmm. It I'm won't always be it. the thing you want, but no. it is the most ridiculous thing. I had this whole encounter of combat planned. This thing had a stat block and everything ready to go. Yep. Instead, uh -huh. instead it was just, you know, hey. <laughs> oh, hi. I hear now you, you have, have snacks. a pet. And there were more things that happened as a result of their having this pet mimic now. And it was hysterical and it was adorable. And mm -hmm. I think it made for a better story because here was his character, Tim. Taking care of this keg mimic, who I had act like a bulldog, was sort of how I personified it. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That's so kind of that, the appropriate size, too. Yeah. That has hmm. the tongue dry brush kind of at a good angle. Yeah. Right the getting the ridges in the tongue yeah. has been super hard. You can see this brings out the gum line in the tongues. Oh, yeah. Do, do, do. Yeah, I'm just trying to get the, the upper gum line just as we're speaking, and then I think I will be done with the dry brushing. Mm-hmm. The DB. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> my my attractive on-camera noises. <laughs> Yay. Also, if you're just joining us, I realized, oh my god, it's already 107. Oh, jeez, it is. Yeah. Hi. We've been so into these mimics. Hi, we're, we're painting mimics on Paint and Slay. Um, so if you're just joining us from the game, welcome. Um, and you can paint along. If you are interested in joining our, our painting, whether mm -hmm. exactly what we're doing or what is going to be coming up, because we're going to do mimics for two weeks. And then there's more coming up after it, which I know we announced the hook horror. There we mm -hmm. go. We announced that and I put it in the Discord. Um, yes. Uh, also, uh, Bayneon, thank you for the subscription. That is wonderful. Enjoy your emotes. There's more emotes on the way. Yee, I'm excited. Um, the, what was I saying? The Discord. Mm -hmm. That's why I was grabbing the cup because uh, everybody's going to be like, oh, we're talking about the Discord. Take a drink. Drink. Discord.gg slash idle champions. Come on by. We have a paint and slay channel where all of the information you need in order to join us in painting these mimics are pinned in that channel and you can join along with the fun. And meanwhile, we're going back to the chest mimic, correct? Yes. 
And we're going to get, they're going to get, that's all folks. We're going to, (laughs) tongue just did not want to work with me on this one. Um, So we've got plenty of, I was going to say there's plenty going around, but clearly mine just decided to leave the party. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the wood details on this, uh, give it some color. So for this, we're going to take beastie brown, which is basically just a nice medium brown tone, warm brown. And we'll add in a touch of black to deepen the color. And then we'll paint it onto the wood. Nice. Of the chest. And are we using the same wood on the chest as on the keg? Or is the keg getting different wood? The keg on the barrel part will get a different brown. But we're going to use the same brown on on the support stand. So this Ah. will be the same wood tone as the chest. And the barrel wood is going to be a lighter tone. That makes sense. Yes. I have methods to my approach of minis. Oh, you always do. That's why I have fun <laughs> asking. All right. So, I just uh, yeah, that's our so I, how much black to brown? It sounds like probably um, just a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be a touch of black. So let's say uh, five parts of the beastie brown to a half part black, if you want it in parts. Or in this case, I am doing another um, dollop that's about a dime. Mm. And then a little dollop that's like a sesame, not a sesame seed, a sunflower seed of black. And then just just a tiny bit just darker. Just a tiny bit darker. All right. All right. Okay, my black is blowing bubbles today. <laughs> <laughs> Every time yeah, I find I... a mix in black, I'm like, oh, that's a nice healthy amount. And then I touch it and it goes, I'm like, oh, there's nothing there. Yeah, all of mine have been doing that today. <laughs> all of my colors. And uh, if you've never used these little bottles, uh, that just seems to happen is you go to pour mm-hmm. some out and what happens is this big bubble just boom, And then you wait for it to explode. Yep. And, and, and then you get some paint and then yep. paint. Um, Erasmus Expositions wants to know, V, do you stop with just... Um, a single dry brush layer, or do you come back with additional lighter ones? Depends on the mini that I'm doing. Quite frankly, I I don't really have a set process for every single mini that I do. It's more paying attention to the details and then deciding what else I may want to bring out as I go along. There are some minis where I've done five different layers of dry brushing for various degrees of heavy handedness. And mm-hmm. then there are others where I'm like, it's one dry brush and that's enough for me. With monsters, especially these types of guys, I tend to keep them more dark and menacing. So I don't bring in as many light colors as a result. Uh, but for, darn it, I've packed away a whole bunch of minis. Um, for other minis, I'll go with lighter tones. Oh, no, she's still here. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. I can show this one. Hold, please. For the, it's also Wiz Kids. It's also Wizards. For the Asperia mini, I did go back in and do a lot more <gasps> highlighting work. I just saw this mini on stream. I mean, not this, not this yeah. exact mini, but like the specific, this creature as a miniature from WizKids. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the creature. If, if, if you watch D4, ah, watched last week's episode, that creature appears. Yeah, It's a it's super cool episode. Beautiful, beautiful miniature. It was one of my mm. favorite ones to paint. Uh, so yeah, it kind of depends on what the miniature is, its color palette and what I want to do to enhance or bring out in terms of personality. All right. We've got our brown. Yeah. Are you sticking with a, a smaller detail brush or are you going back to the bigger one? I very much am sticking with a smaller detail brush. Okay. And my paints have been pretty, I think because my black is a little bit more runny. Um, I haven't had to thin my paints, but you do want to make sure that when you're going with your paints, you're not using something that's like toothpaste thick. You want, I want to say, chat, what food am I going to say? What consistency do you want your paint to be? <laughs> Chat. This is this is the portion of the program in where uh, the the pop quiz has happened. Mm-hmm. Um, porridge, potato, milk, nope, not milk, milk, gazpacho, ketchup. Nope, ketchup's too thick. Duck soup. Duck ketchup. soup. Oh, I mean, come on. Where are the Canadians? People, people are just getting hungry. Mashed potatoes. Blanc maple mange. syrup. Maple, maple syrup. syrup. Hey, hey, Chad, it's maple syrup. It's maple so syrup. I always say maple syrup. Gravy. Gravy. Poutine. Gravy. Well, Jetsy, someone, shoot. Someone, someone say. 
Now I'm seeing mashed potatoes, gravy, and now I'm just hungry. Mm hmm. Now I have the hunger. Bagged milk? I mean, I know that exists, but it does. please. Yeah. But please. Oh, and now Kralin72 is talking about um, poutine, and we, we've lost the chat. They're, they're yeah, into food. They're, they're in food. I made, I made people hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what we do. We're here to have a relaxing painting stream mm -hmm. where afterwards you're going to want to eat a meal. Yep. Not sorry. Welcome to our painting. Not sorry. Yeah. Because food is fun. Food is life. Go get yourself a snack. Food is. We have just watched an hour of pancake. All food topics are dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is true. What I appreciated during the pancake show is that they actually talked a little bit about uh, pancakes versus crepes. Oh, and yeah. the weird thin line between the two. Mm-hmm. And now I kind of want pancakes and crepes. Right. That just that just happens. I also just realized how appropriate I like to use maple syrup as a food reference right after the pancake stream. <laughs> That was not and and with with all of the people uh, that we work with who are Canadians, mm -hmm. all of our lovely, lovely oh, Canadian, I'd say brethren, except yeah, co-workers. There we go. <laughs> there's a word. There's there's a word I was looking for. A halt. <laughs> see, see, between the two of us, we'll get all of the words. We will we'll get there. We absolutely will. Yeah. And I'm glad that you said use the detail brush because for whatever mm -hmm. reason, even though I knew that like we would be doing outlining in some of the gold, like what's on the chest and there would be the handles that are on the side, I I still kind of thought, oh, the brown is going to go over most of the body of this thing. And Ooh. surprisingly enough, no. Eh? No, this is a nope. Yeah, getting, getting, in, getting in between everything. That is, that is the challenge. Oh dear. All right. I think I'm going to start on the bottom just to kind of get into the, the swing of things. Because mm -hmm. I was looking at, I was looking at the planks of wood that are higher up near where the spikes are mm -hmm. and, and how that is going to be a challenge. So we're going to start yes. on the bottom and work our way up. Yes. It's definitely, it's deceivingly simple. Yeah. Looking. You're like, oh, it's just a few things, but those few things each need patience and detail. Let's pay attention to them. And this is one of those moments in where we're doing the brown first before we do like the bronzish gold accents because of the fact that those are raised. Yes. Ah, okay. See, you're picking up on it. I'm I'm getting it. I'm that goes back it. to the how do you plot it out? Because, yeah, I could see where doing the stuff that is lower on the the mini mm -hmm. would be easier to then cover up if you get stuff on the higher bits of the mini. Yeah. I learned a thing, chat. Hey. Yay. We did it. All right, I'm going to take a break and check in on <laughs> Noskin in chat as I come over to where Mars has been grabbing uh, questions from chat, which thank you for everybody who's been putting questions yes. in. If you do have questions about the game, about uh, our mimics, about painting, about anything, go ahead and put those in chat with question because, uh, question in big capital letters before it, because Mars has been grabbing those, but I happened to look over at the chat and saw Noskin saying, is there a different type of bacon in Canada? Canadian bacon. Yeah. There you go. Uh, we also have some more suggestions. Banana Mobster says names for the mimics, uh, Jameson and Saratoga. Jameson is <laughs> in the keg and uh -huh. Saratoga is in the chest. Yep. I like that too. I, I might go with Saratoga. Saratoga is fun. I grew up in New York and I went I to Saratoga for, yeah. Yeah. The, I went to a orchestral music camp for several summers oh, while I was that. in high school in Saratoga because at least at the time the New York Philharmonic did their residence in Sarasota mm -hmm. which is just south mm -hmm. um in this tiny tiny little town and they would go out there and they would do uh, concerts outside and concerts in the park and all sorts of fun stuff and then the the people in the orchestra would actually teach some master classes for the students at this month long camp. And so cool. it was fun. Ooh, I got to see Yo-Yo Ma live. That was- Oh, that's yeah. amazing. 
I was way back and we were in the, the, the way, way, way back seats. So you could only really see mm -hmm. um, with with the spy glasses that we were sharing. Uh, but so I, more appropriately, I got to hear Yo-Yo Ma live. I still am envious of either or. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was amazing. It was absolutely oh, incredible. So cool. Yeah, that's so cool. And then also super kind. Like I did not get a chance to actually meet him, but when he uh, when he found out that there were students, that there was this whole music camp who had come to watch, he asked if any of the cellists in the um, at the music camp wanted to like come backstage and chat. Oh and, wow! Uh, of course, the entire cello section was like, "Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please." <laughs> and so he mm -hmm. just hung out after the concert and oh invited gosh. all of the the cello students backstage so that he could chat with them for a little bit before we went back to uh, the dorms, and just like had his Stradivari cello. Of course, I'm t I'm telling this story secondhand because right. I'm no voiced. But I had a friend who was a cellist who came back and was like, "He just had his Stradivari there," and like would just play stuff as he was demonstrating things. And then the principal cellist was like uh, talking about something and he just handed the principal cellist to Stradivarius so that he could try it out on the cello. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, okay, that's amazing. Incredible. So yeah, uh, I have secondhand, but very, very good story that Yo-Yo Ma, very wonderful individual. I love stuff like that. Yeah and continues to be from from everything that I have seen. Amazing. So okay, I'm I want to take a look. Yeah, I'm watching where you're on the spiky spikes. So what I'm going to do is the spiky spikes, some of them I'm just going to treat like extra teeth, essentially horns. So they're going to get a bone weight on them. Okay. Um, but around the eyes, I am bringing the brown up as the eyelid color. Okay. So there'll be this little cluster here that I am yeah. going to make bone white, but there's also some spacing that's happening. Ah, so I am going yeah. to go in where there's a little bit of a larger spot and just stipple, which is you take the tip of your paintbrush and you poke into the area. So I'm going to stipple. I keep bopping my nose on the cord of my camera today. I think I didn't pull it as taut as I normally do. <laughs> my camera keeps is... booping me. Boop. Um, and just stipple where there's like larger gaps between those horns. Yeah get the brown in the deeper recessed area. That was the word I was looking for when I talked about just going poke, 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 poke. Yes. I should have said stipple, 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 stipple. Yes. But poke, poke, poke also conveys what she would be doing. So either, either are uh, perfectly acceptable in my book. It's also fun just to try to say stipple incredibly quickly. Stipple, 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 um, oh, Garwar is in chat. Hey! Hi, Garwar. Welcome. It has a suggestion for sibling mimic names, Gunna and Get Ya. I like it. Oh, I fun. like it. That's super fun. That's the question cute. is, do you take a Gunna and I take a Get Ya, or do one of us take Gunna and Get Ya for both of them? Well, I'm kind of stuck with Ginny and Mimi because of my... Okay. My original typo to you when I was saying get the Mimi mimics. Yeah, the Mimi mimics. I'm like, well, I still understood what you meant. I know. I still, I'm still like, okay, I will get uh -huh. the mimics, sure. And then later on, I was just like, are are they called Mimi? Like, what what was that all about? Clearly, my brain was already naming one. And yeah, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna send um, Doctor B the keg mimic when I'm done. Yay! Don't tell him. Hey, not, hey, no. chat, chat. Don't tell Doctor B. Listen, promise me. If Dr. B shows up in chat, because he often does, mm -hmm. or if you watch uh, Champions of Psychology, which you should, mm -hmm. promise me, you're not going to tell Dr. B about this, that that the keg is for him. Do you promise? I, I'm waiting for the chat to catch up with the stream so I can see everybody in chat saying they promise. Okay. I am not going to continue painting until I see every... All several hundred of you promising in chat. <laughs> yeah, Missouri says, don't worry, Lauren, we're still too busy talking about this. I saw that. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, promise. Promise. Pinky swear. Thank beautiful. you. So, thank you, Saltnet. Thank you, Desertin. Thank you, Star Chaser. Wait, <laughs> I love 
That's the best. That's that's the best one. Xavier being like, chat, you make me smile. Seriously. (laughs) Wait, promise what? Uh, And then just as you get close to the gum line here, this is where I was starting to do the feathering. So you can Ah, see it blends a little bit. So it's just very lightly going back and forth with the brown, not completely into the purple all the way down, but just where you want it to overlap. And it creates this little blend. And now it is time for me to go back to stippling and blending and the tiny, tiny little eyes. I need to rinse my brush because it's getting a little dry. My... <laughs> these eyes, these eyes, uh-huh. man. This are, is you, why are you still looking at I'm chat? S- Sorry. I'm, no, it's, I'm, I'm having fun just seeing them. I'll promise everything. Uh, Good. But this is why the mimics are taking two episodes because those eyes, yo. <laughs> <laughs> those eyes. If if these mimics just didn't have eyes, we would still take two episodes because it's fun to go slow. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. Okay. You okay there? I, I, I got one good. I got one bad. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I have one that I'm super proud about and one that, that I might have gotten a little bit on the yellow and and that's okay. So I'm, I'm 50%. It'll, yeah. You'll be able to fix that though. It's more the fixing when the yellow goes elsewhere that's trickier. So yeah. just be careful going back in next time. Only oh, got... have eyes for you. There you go, Jer. <laughs> And there we go. So I'm at I'm at fifty percent here with doing good with the eyes. Let, let's see if I can get that up to seventy five percent. Oh my goodness. Ooh. I know I'm I know I'm ignoring all the questions that are coming in that Mars is uh, probably very diligently grabbing, but this is this is a delicate procedure. This, this right is now. focus for sure. This is the smallest, the smallest of eyes. Mm-hmm. Oof, this is this is the smallest thing I've ever painted. Actually, is it the smallest thing I've ever no, painted? No, the myconids are smaller. Yeah, but did they they didn't have as many small parts on them. True. No, they had the mushrooms. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Little mushrooms. This is them. this is one of the smallest things I've yes. ever painted. One of the smallest. Qualifier. Okay. All right. All right. One more okay. eye to go. I did not hear I qualifier. I heard koala fire. <laughs> like, why are you setting the koala on fire? Well, uh, I didn't mean to set the koala on fire. It, my brain is on I Friday. I don't want to set the koala on fire. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry, koalas. Uh, sorry, koalas, but I need to get brown around these eyes. Oof. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I know it's not going to show up incredibly well on camera, but uh, 75% of my eyes look great. Awesome. Don't ask about the other 25%. I won't. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to do a little bit of cleanup right there. Just a tiny bit. Just a, just a little. See, and now this is something that I I have definitely learned that was a assumption of mine over mini painting that the idea that you would be doing fine detail work on a mini and where whole swaths of it hadn't been painted yet. Mm-hmm. Like that is something that I, I totally thought like, oh, you go in and do the fine detail work after you've done like the, the, the swaths of color. Oh, you yeah. know, you, you do the cleanup afterwards. So that has definitely been something I have learned. The more you know. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm at the point where I think if I do any more, I am gonna make it bad. Fair. <laughs> oh God, Anesmus Egan says every time you guys say keg mi- mimic, I hear cake mimic. The there's, cake is a lie. There's a Guess. cake mimic floating around out there. The cake is a lie. Oh, I feel bad though. Uh, I don't think I could offer my players a cake mimic, especially with that meme that was going around for a while where everything was cake. Do you remember that? Yes. It was just like, look at this. Yeah. I was never disturbed by it. I was always kind of impressed, but I know fondant is friggin' amazing. Like you can do stuff with fondant 
Fondant? Fondant? Fondant. That's how Fondant. I say it. <laughs> you can do stuff with that. That it's basically like oh, yeah. edible clay. Yeah. And so I was just impressed at the artistry of people being like, look, it's a book, but it's a cake. Look, it's a table, but it's a cake. cake. Look, it's a house. It's the entire cake. Mm -hmm. Everything is a cake. Yeah, I think one of the first ones I saw was like, here's a cake. Wait, the plate is also a cake. Wait, oh, wow. uh, the silverware is also cake. The cup that is holding this water, uh, the cake. cup and the water, cake. Oh, and the table is cake. What? <laughs> it was it was ridiculous. I loved it so much. Amazing. Oh, jeez. But yeah, that's that is dedication. That is dedication to the cake. Uh huh. That is definitely one of those memes that I think I enjoyed more than a lot of people. I thought it was fun. I thought it was super fun too. But you're you're right that a lot of people were kind of disturbed by it. That mm -hmm. like, you know, that it it they would get upset. I know people actually were upset when you you'd see something and then be like and it's a cake no no that's oh. not fair no yep. this can't be true take it back search your feelings you know this cake is true oh i just got purple i just got brown on the gums ah uh, quick do the clean brush and water yeah 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 Fix it, fix it, fix it. Fix it now. And don't forget when we finish this of getting the wood slats, we want to go underneath and get the bottom. Yeah. Because that will be a thing. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I remembered to do the wash on the bottom, so let's hope I can mm -hmm. remember to do the brown on the bottom. Um. Yeah, the cake is a lie. The dungeon was a mimic all along. Um, Irene UK, would Orkira prefer the cake was made of marshmallows, though? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. That is an... I, I'm a little now preoccupied with the idea of, a, of everything is a cake except for the cake, which is marshmallows. <laughs> Although, you would have to have the marshmallow covered in fondant in yes. order to get the same effect. Would that be effect. A marshmallows hold on to fondant's heavy. I have no clue. We're getting very philosophical about cake construction. Well, and just uh, philosophy. Yes. To be honest, this is all philosophical, the philosophical quandary. I mean, Orkira, I think her answer is if, if it's delicious, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Like not everything has to be marshmallows. Right. Uh, like, I, I, think, I think variety is good. Mm -hmm. That's why she really likes the pocket brisket. This is true. Well, the good thing about the bottom is I think we can move to the larger brush, right? Yes, absolutely. It'll be easier. Awesome. Good, 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 good. Yeah. I'm just kind of turning the mimic around looking for spots that I've missed before I switch brushes and go to the bottom. Fair. Because I keep finding them. I yes. keep finding them. That's a thing. Uh, Wilhelm Scream. Great name, by the way. Apologies for the off-topic question. You don't have to apologize. This is a... We're mostly talking about mini painting and idol champions and cake. Mm -hmm. Apparently cake is the theme of the day, yeah. but, um, you know, we're also just here to chat. This is a very chill stream. Uh, do you still play music professionally? I do. It's just been a lot harder recently. Yeah. I actually just had a gig, uh, two weeks ago with the Bellevue symphony. We did, um, a whole concert. Uh, we did Beethoven's third and then a whole bunch of the first movement of a bunch of piano concertos and the Tchaikovsky violin concerto because the concert was the the celebratory winners of a young person's concerto competition. So uh, we were playing there. They got a chance to play with a professional orchestra uh, at a concert. And I was the professional orchestra, which meant I get to play the Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto first movement, which is, despite the fact that there is no oboe in this part, if you listen to it, at the very beginning, there's a little bit of piano and then the strings come in. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those moments, like I, it just happened, just thinking about it, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and I get tingles. Mm -hmm. It is so good. 
so good. And it had been so long since I had played in an actual orchestra on stage because of the panini that when the strings came in and I could feel the vibration on the floor, I started to cry. So it's a good thing that as an oboist, I don't play for half of that movement because I started to sob right there on stage. Just, yeah, it took me a minute to to compose myself before I had to play. Yeah, Rachmaninoff Piano Concert is so gorgeous. That's wonderful, seriously. Yeah. Uh, And I do have a gig coming up in a couple weeks, but they are are, uh, few and far between. Uh, because everyone's trying to be as safe as possible. And um, yeah, but thank you for asking. Uh, And yeah, I I do take requests on Twitter to play bits and pieces of oboe on Twitter, but um, I haven't had the chance to do that recently because I'm having a weird... So this is the face cam, which is the newer camera that... I love, but if I, because it has this automatic depth of field for faces, if I go back there to play oboe, I don't quite get a really clear video. It's just a little, a little fuzzy and that bothers me. Yeah. Okay. So we're doing the base of the keg, the keg you said. Yeah. That's oh, I forgot to do the underside. I will get back to that. Don't forget your undercarriage. I will I will not forget the undercarriage. Chat, don't let me forget the undercarriage. <laughs> this is why this is a live stream, so I can just rely on chat for things. Mm-hmm. Is that so on the back of the the uh the undercarriage? Well, I don't know if it's an undercarriage. On the back of the base, there's like this round thing. Actually, it's not round. I wonder if it's just a problem with the mini. Check out what you mean. Because oh. this is what the back of mine looks like. Is that what you're seeing? Oh, no. I've Uh-oh. got like a part. Oh, it's going to be so hard to show you. Uh, looks like it might be a um, spur or a leak of the mold. Yeah, like there's a whole chunk that's a little raised, and uh, I can actually kind of get my fingernail under it. Like there, I could almost yeah, peel something it happened off. with. Um, that huh. if you can peel it off, it might be that the resin kind of hiccuped in the mold. Okay. I haven't pulled yet. I just, I know okay. I can get my fingernail under it. I would is it, see if you can get a pair of tweezers and yank it up, to be honest. If it's I, loose. I, yeah. All right. Um, h- hang out with chat for about 30 seconds okay. while I go get a pair of tweezers. Okay. Things to add to your list of supplies. The tweezers. So while Lauren's vamping to get her tweezers, or rather while Lauren's running to get her tweezers, I will vamp. So uh, what I'm going to do, and remember chat, don't tell, don't tell Dr. B this. What I'm going (laughs) to do is once we get all the paint and everything on here, because he named the cask Jenny, we made her cask number 8675309. So those numbers are going to get put onto this before I send it out to Dr. B. (laughs) Yeah, there's, there's like this whole flap Ooh. of like you're like I just okay but the tweezers I, yanked it off at least uh I gotta get a little bit more because I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to like yeah. better to discover this now than to have painted the whole thing though yeah like and it it I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the whole thing off but at least I got the part that was hanging out that was gonna mm. be but yeah that that was that was a weird thing yeah, sometimes it happens I mean gosh these are producing a factory yeah. So, it I mean, I get it. So it was often. just, yeah. I thought it was part of the the mimic, and so I'm like, oh, are we doing something with that? Wait, what is that? Wait, you don't have that. I don't have that. That's not <laughs> a feature. <laughs> that's 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 a feature of my mimic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's just a feature of mine. The flap on the undercarriage. That's right, Chakra one five one. It's just it's you know. I don't know how else to describe it. And so that's yeah. how I'm going to describe it. Oof. And now trying to actually get the under part of this stand, which looks really cool, but getting to it is hard. It's a little trickier, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Bishop MQ, MCQ96 says, I have an exacto and tiny files to clean up the, the flashing and spur. Yes, those do come in quite handy. However, that's something that comes with time and practice. And I'd rather not have Lauren have to go to the emergency room <laughs> for a slip. Eh. Yes. Um, so I honestly, I purposely don't use the sharper tools for removing things for that very reason. Plus, um, you know, there are people watching who may not be familiar or as comfortable with using those types of tools. Again, mm. liability reasons. I won't use sharp objects for removing things. Uh, you yeah. can always use tweezers to try and pull away the excess and then file down. Uh, that can work too. Uh, or you can get a mold line remover. Where There you are. That's another handy thing, which is not, I mean, you can, you'd have to push really hard to hurt yourself, but that will help remove things. Like you can see it just pulled the paint off my skin, but it didn't scratch me. Yeah. So that's another tool that you can get. That's a little bit more of a duller thing. Not as sharp. No, that is good to know. Yeah. Although, uh, so I kind of know what a spur is, mm -hmm. um, but what's a flashing? It's where the mold lines and stuff collect oh. up. Okay. At least in my world. I'm just learning all of the terminology as we go. Yeah. And I know a lot of stuff has a lot of different names, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Missouri What's just up? said, you know, the emergency room got to say highly overrated. Three out of ten would not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Oh, Abyssal Icarus says the edge of a small metal ruler also works well. If you have the space for it, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, the the tweezers for me for for what that was, and I'm it's going to be really hard to show. Um, I think until I've got it painted because the, yeah. the white is just going to flaring out. But you know what? It it does. It's not like I look at it and go, "Oh, that is some something ugly back there," yeah. because it's the stand that this keg is on. Like it's not ruining anything. Uh, but the tweezers got the flap off that was hanging loose. <laughs> which was going to be uh frustrating yeah. so yeah that that worked pretty well and i'm i'm perfectly happy with not having to worry about knives yeah. or exactos or any of that it absolutely can be done you have to be very careful you have to be very patient it's yeah. not something to rush uh and please 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 if this is something you're going to explore there are other mini painters who have youtube channels who show people how to use these objects like I said, on a live stream right now, that is not something I want to get into or put us at risk. Yeah, I mean, we're too busy talking about food. Yeah. We don't want to gross anybody out. Yeah. Ooh, get back there. Stipple, 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 stipple. <laughs> I love I'm trying to get under this ribbon arm. Uh, yeah, it's which, tricky. It moves a little bit, but I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to change. It actually has it. a lot of give, Lauren. Does it? Look. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it has give. If you want to peel it back and hold, you can totally hold oh, it like wow. this. Yeah. I moved it a little bit. I'm like, advance. okay, but I don't want to break it. No, it's but good. Yeah. It's got a flexibility. And now, and now we'll hold hands. Look at that. <laughs> I'm just going to hold this thing back. Yeah, because I was trying to get under the arm at this, this part of the mm -hmm. stand. Mm-hmm. There we go. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So close. So close. We're almost there. Yeah, we're getting there. Um, because we we are running out of time. I know. I just realized what the time was, but I wanted to make sure we got this part in because again we're dealing with the uh leveling up paint factor. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. But we're almost we're almost done. Yeah. I've got I I have to do both our undercarriages. Which I'm gonna grab the the larger brush for, so it shouldn't take too long. Yeah. Um. Oh, missed a step. Sorry, everybody in chat is still talking about uh, safety. And safety, yeah. Scissors, knives, yeah. and safety, yeah. Yeah, you know, and part of being an oboist is that I make my own reeds, and so I do have to deal with knives on a regular basis because you know. Reeds are made of cane and Caden needs a shaven. And so yep. uh, I I got an education from my oboe teachers, not just in how to make oboe reeds, 
but how to prevent uh, from cutting yourself. And it's it's an important lesson for sure. Mm-hmm. I just realized this mimic has feet. Yes. <laughs> Which I painted and we'll have some fun with doing the uh, claw work next week. For yep, sure. I just saw that. Okay. I'm going to get to my other brush and do the undercarriage before. So if anyone has any last minute questions, we've yes. got about five minutes left before it's going to be Gar Wars Guide to Everything. Yay! Yay! Um, and so stick around for Gar War, who will be mm -hmm. answering lots of awesome questions and helping people out. Um, and then, yeah, this is going to be the, the first weekend of Tatiana's event. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be Tatiana. hardcore going after Tatiana chests. Don't forget. Oh, yeah, there we go. There mm -hmm. we go. There we go. Oh, I'm having a hard time getting into this undercarriage. You got Tatiana, ah. and don't forget, there's the Tatiana Shadowfell. <gasps> That's a lovely bit of beautiful things. If you want to check that one out, and uh, along with Tatiana over the weekend, don't forget Monday night. Well, night for me, evening for or afternoons even, afternoons for the uh, West Coast people, uh, we have Court of the Raven Queen. We're going yes. into episode four. So make sure you tune in 4 p.m. Pacific on this channel and check it out. Yep. We have B. Dave as DM and then all these fantastic players. You have DJ playing Desmond uh, and doing a great job at it too. And you have Aaron coming in as Farida instead of Howler. We have Farida this season and I mean, a familiar face for all of us. Lauren is playing Orkira as well. And we have Mark Mir coming in as Bela Veratil. And we also have Sharif Jackson playing Shaka. Yeah. Doing a great job. Oh my God, that drop that he did with the Raven Queen. Oh, it's amazing. Um, and yeah. Becca joined us last week for episode three as Tatiana. But yeah, we're going to have the whole crew back again on Monday at 4 p.m. So come and join us. It's a lot of fun. It and really we'll be is. starting. We will be starting not just in the middle of combat, mm. in the middle of my turn. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I did my bonus action. I did my movement. I was getting ready to do an action. I was fretting about doing an action, and B Dave stopped me. Uh huh. Which is a first. It mm -hmm. is a first for me as both a player and a DM to be stopped not just in the middle of combat, but in the middle of a turn of combat. I'm impressed. It was yeah. kind of perfect as a role playing moment, though. So I'm not. It's intense. I'm not angry about it. No, it was yeah. super intense and super cool. I was like, well, that is a decision that has me on pins and needles now. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm I'm excited for that. So join us. Um, I'm going to go through thank yous because we do have to stop. Uh, v, thank you as always yeah. for being awesome and teaching us the ways of painting. Thank you to everybody in chat for all of your awesome suggestions and questions and being kind and hanging out with us. Thank you to Mars for being our wonderful producer and moderator and grabbing those questions from chat and finding out that the thing, oh, it's gone. Where'd it go? The, the thing. The, Finding, the finding medical names for stuff. Yes. That thing. The ABES is what I'm going to just keep calling it. <laughs> for, for being the person who looks up all of the terms that we uh, are too busy painting a mimic to look up ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, thank you to uh, everybody. There we go. Chat. I think I thanked everybody. Yes. Thank you to chat. As I said, stick around for Gar Wars Guide to Everything. Uh, and I think that's it. Any Fantastic. any last bit of minute things you want to say, V? Have a lovely and restful weekend, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Bye.